What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. I would like to present you the most interesting set for me from the 2021 LEGO Technic first wave. This is the 42124 off-road buggy. Yeah, uh, more about that later. The set comes in a mid-size box, it has only 374 pieces, which is an incredibly low piece count considering the price and the functionality of the model. The price is, by the way, 130 euros or dollars, same as the Top Gear Rally car. The photo on the front shows the buggy outdoors on a dirt track. I'm not sure how many customers will think this set was designed for outdoor usage, I have some doubts. On the back of the box we see the features described, which basically means the buggy can be remote controlled, and on the second picture I guess we see the suspension in action. There are some details of the control plus profile, but more about that later. On the sides of the box we see the powered up components used, the Technic Hub and two large motors. One used for driving, the other one for steering. On the other side we see the brand new tire with the rim in the new white color. Now let's open the box. There are only three unnumbered bags inside, the tires, the hub and the two L motors in separate bags, the manual and the sticker sheet without protection. It's interesting to see the hub and the motors like this. In all the previous Control Plus sets they had a separate box. As you see, the sticker sheet will definitely need some extra protection. Let's see the brand new tires. The diameter is 75.1 mm. It has a nice off-road pattern. It is pretty hard. We will see how it behaves outside. Here's a digital comparison with some of the tires available for the same rim. The manual has nothing extra in it. We get some visual guidance for the setup and the same feature demonstration as on the back of the box. And here is the part list of the set, really not much. There are some new parts in the set, some of them already appeared in the Jeep. You can see the 3x7 panel and the piece that fits between the small panel fairings. Here's the wheel and the rim. The white variant is a huge improvement. It was very much missing for a lot of builds. I'm looking at you, unicorn fans. And here is a very interesting new piece, a 15 stud long beam with alternating holes. The structure is similar to the Technic frames we had previously, but in a beam format. It's quite interesting to see this new design. I wonder if we will see similar pieces in different length. I'm not sure if it is a coincidence, but I've already seen similar pieces at alternative brick manufacturers previously. Now let's start building. The process begins with one of the L motors that is used for steering. There's a long axle attached to it. We added the first 7x3 panel with a sticker and then fix it in an angled position with these beams on the side. Here comes the first part for the front axle. Apparently there is no traditional gear and steering rack used for the steering. We have a two stud long beam attached to the steering axle that will move these blue and black beams sideways. The movement is limited by the gap between the two row of beams. If I use this bigger gear to rotate the steering axle left and right, you can see how limited will be the steering angle. This section will protect the motor and the front axle from the bottom. The front axles are added. They have to be connected to the steering arms and then these limiters are added to prevent the axles from sliding out. Here come the springs to have the front axle completed. We will see how sturdy this front bumper will be in practice. And now we can add the new 15 stud long alternating beams. Apparently they will be the ones providing support to the hub. Here comes the hub and you can see how the angle of the front section is set with this method. The next item to build is the cabin and the part of the rear section with the soft spring supporting the rear axle. The rear axle uses the new differential type just like the 42109 rally car. Unlike the rally car, however, we have a large motor at the rear for drive instead of the extra large one. The gearing is the same, there's a 36 tooth gear driving the differential. There's a long 12 stud long axle to insert for the other side of the rear axle, with some bushes and tubes to make sure it does not get pulled out easily. Make sure the axle is pushed all the way in, otherwise it won't be connected to the differential properly. You can test it by turning one of the axles, the other side should rotate in the opposite direction. If you turn the main gear of the differential and hold one of the axles, 
the other one should rotate again. Time to attach the rear axle to the springs. The cable of the motor should be connected to port A. The axles with the yellow bushes at the end should be pushed all the way in to fix the rear axle in place, although it is interesting to see that there is nothing holding the axle on the inner side. Hopefully it stays in place during some off-road fun. After adding the A-pillars, we put the rear spoiler in place. The side panel with the retro sticker is really simple. You need to make sure the cable is properly rooted behind it. Same goes for the other side. Some more panels to add on both sides, the connection is a bit tricky for the first side. As a final touch we have the antenna to install and the wheels. According to the instructions there are 4 stickers to put on the rims. They are quite difficult to put on properly and I prefer to keep them clean, so I decided not to apply them. And here is our finished buggy. I would say it looks great, despite the very low piece count it does not look unfinished. I heard some opinions about the color scheme being too girlish, but I don't think so. I guess it wants to have some 80s vibe and I like it. The overall look and proportions are great, love the new white rims and the tires look cool as well. Now let's add some batteries and fire up the app. This is a beta version of the Control Plus app, so the features might change in the final version. The process starts with a firmware update, it takes a minute or two. After the update there's a very quick calibration and we get a tutorial about the controls. Unfortunately the designers selected joystick control, I'm not a big fan of this. I would prefer to see separate controls for throttle and steering. There's a brake button on the right, and we see the usual telemetry data from the hub in the middle. As you see, this is really a test version of the app. There are some temporary buttons in the top left corner. Some of them is actually pretty useful, like the trim left and right buttons that we can use to fine tune the servo calibration. There are some buttons on the right side that are not really working in this version yet. Meanwhile, I received an update for the beta app that I installed on my phone, so we can compare things. The temporary buttons are gone, unfortunately, but the mysterious buttons on the right are working. Any ideas what they are doing? Seriously? The most important thing to add to a buggy control profile is chicken and fart sound effects? There was nothing else more related to racing or control? Maybe adding the trim buttons permanently? Really, my daughter who's 3 years old finds the sound effects really funny, but I'm not sure that is the age of the set's target audience. I have to say I'm really disappointed. Please excuse me before talking about the buggy itself, I want to spend a few more minutes with the app, because it only gets worse. There's no alternative control besides the joystick, I can only hope that the final version will have something else. And this is the part where I think the developers really reached a new low. Instead of the usual pretty useless challenges, we have battle mode. I'm sure you are wondering what the heck is it? Well you can select different skills, get some additional skills automatically, and then fight against a virtual opponent. If the virtual car is close enough, that is indicated by the green car on the screen, you can attack him with your skills or use others for defense. Maybe I'm too old for this, but please let me know in the comments if this makes any sense for anyone. Please, I really want to know. We have a car to drive around, not looking at the screen to fight with virtual skills against a virtual car. Okay, enough of the app. Let's see how the car really drives. As I said, for me it's quite a challenge to use the joystick for control, but on the positive side, the buggy is surprisingly fast. If you try to drive backwards, there's some occasional wiggling of the front wheels. I guess it happens if I steer unintentionally to the left or right. Testing a smaller obstacle indoors, 
This one is not a challenge for the car, but as you see, it is not that difficult to make it stuck. As I mentioned, I really don't like the virtual joystick controls, so I created quickly a profile with the two sliders in the Powered Up app. It is much better this way, the control is much easier with the sliders. It is also possible to use the Powered Up remote, although we will only have Bang Bang controls, so for precision control, the sliders are actually better. Now let's compare it to the rally car. First, I will try with the control pass profiles. As you know, the rally car has a simulated automatic gearbox that starts very, very slow. And here is the difference, it is quite significant. It takes awfully lot of time for the rally car to accelerate with this software limitation. That's why people think that car is very slow. But what happens if we create a control profile for them in the Powered Up app and both cars can accelerate with full throttle? Well, as you see, the rally car becomes much faster suddenly, although the buggy still wins the race thanks to the bigger wheels. The indoor performance is pretty good, now let's see it outdoors. Well, the speed is less convincing here, but don't forget that I'm using rechargeable batteries, so with the alkalines the performance would be slightly better. I will do further tests later on with different power sources. It can drive off-road, but maybe a dirt track would be better. It can also survive moderate jumps, but don't expect it to accelerate and fly, it rather falls. The car is clearly tuned for speed, as you see here even this ramp is too steep, it cannot climb it. So, let's sum it up. I think it is a great little buggy, it is fun to drive around. The construction is good, it is sturdy enough to survive some indoor racing, and perhaps outdoors as well. It offers some great new parts and does not seem to be difficult to modify to improve the performance. What I really don't like is the Control Plus profile. The joystick control is awful and imprecise, there's no alternative control method, and the extra features are ridiculous and useless. Both the sound effects and the battle mode. I really hope the final version of the app will look different, or it will be changed going forward. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my technic reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time, bye bye!